Good morning, everyone. Actually, it's more like afternoon. Um, it's 12.52 right now. I am Prophet Lakeisha out of East Lansing, Michigan, and I wanted to put a pause to my day to address something that I saw this morning. Um, could not address it at the time because I had too much going on, but now I have a break so that I can address this before I continue on with my day because I need to be obedient. I need to be obedient um, sooner rather than later. But anywho, this is for kingdom leaders. This is for seasoned saints. If you are not a kingdom leader, if you are not a seasoned saint, this word is not for you. But please take heed to what I'm about to say and receive it from the end of protection because it is my intent to protect those who are coming into the fold. It is my intent to be used by God to ensure that those who are coming into the fold, those who are seeking salvation, those who are seeking him, no one understand that what I am about to address is definitely an issue. It is an, it is, it is an issue to God, which is why he has me addressing it. So anywho, this is the issue. This morning as I was scrolling through, through social media, like I tend to do, um, just to clear out my notifications because I don't like having notifications every which way, um, grow and grow and grow. So I tend to clear them out. Anywho, going through my social media, I saw a meme that, a uh, seasoned saint, I'm not sure if he's a kingdom leader cause I don't follow him that closely, but I know that he's a seasoned saint and a lot of what he posts is, um, church related. I'll put it like that. Uh, so I assume that he's a seasoned saint at the very least. He's a seasoned saint. And what he did was he shared a meme that was posted by someone else. And let me stop here for a second. Even if we are not the originator of something that appears on our social media feeds, by sharing it, we are condoning it, we are co-signing it, and we are stating that it is a true representation of the God that we say we serve. Be careful with that. We can't just say anything. We can't just share anything. We can't just be condoning anything. We share stuff. We uh, create posts. We post them. We submit them. We share them, whatever the case may be. A lot of times, seemingly in autopilot, because I don't even think that you guys actually process what it is that you're sharing and what it is that you're posting, but you need to. This particular post was in reference to young women coming into church scantily dressed, and it had images of different women basically saying that they needed to be more modest when coming into the church. That's not verbatim. I'll post the exact meme so that you guys can see what I'm re re referencing so that you can have clarity in what I'm, res what I'm responding in this video. Anywho, <laughs> I read it. I shook my head and I always go to the original poster because that is where the comment section is usually the largest. And so I went to the original poster and I commented, commented on the original posters page and I commented after reading all the comments of other seasoned saints and other church folk condoning what was posted. We got to stop. We have to stop contradicting the word of God that we say we live by. What do I mean by that? One hand, we're telling people to come to church as they are. God just wants them to come to church. And then on the other hand, <laughs> when we don't like their version of come as they are, we judge, we criticize, we overly critique, we throw religious doctrine at them. And because of social media, we have put ourselves on these pedestals where we even began to do what I saw today, which is to make mockery of those who come to God in the form of coming into their ch into churches that are supposed to be where he dwells, that are supposed to be sanctuaries for those who are in the world to come in, to receive him, to learn to be more like him and to learn to follow Jesus. We're making mockery of them through social media with these memes. Come as you are, but then when they come as they are, they get mocked. That two plus two don't equal four. It equals foolish pride. It equals condemnation. It equals I'm not truly hearing from God because if I was truly hearing from God, I would not be sharing this. I would not be posting this. I would not be co-signing this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have become a double-minded people. And if you know the word of God, the way that you proclaim to know the word of God with your judgmental selves, you would know that God is not a double minded God and he does not like double minded people. There is no gray area with true followers of Christ. 
You're either a follower or you're not. It's as simple as that. And I say true followers of Christ because Christianity is an umbrella term. Christianity covers the gamut of believers. Partial believers, sometime believers, believers when it's convenient for me, believers, full-fledged believers, whatever the gamut may be, that's Christianity. If you are a true follower of Christ, which many of you purport to be, then you follow the principles and the teachings of Jesus. And if you follow the principles and the teachings of Jesus, then you also know that those he allowed to follow him during his time were those who came as they are. Now, I could sit here and I can give a Bible lesson on the histories of the different apostles and their backgrounds, but I'm not going to do that because, again, this video is for the kingdom leaders and for the seasoned saints who should already know the history of the apostles who follow Jesus and the diversity in their backgrounds and where they came from. Jesus didn't ask them to transform before they followed him and before he used them. The journey of following him and him using him, him using them, is what transformed them. Now, we know that a couple of them still went left even after they were used. But that's neither here nor there. Because he didn't require transformation. All he required was obedience and a desire to live as he was living, which was to serve people, to go from place to place to place, transforming the lives of those who came in count, he, those he encountered and those who he came in contact with by many different avenues. If you follow the life of Jesus, you know that it was unique. It was powerful. It was beautiful. And Jesus wasn't a respecter of persons. He wasn't a respecter of appearances. He wasn't a respecter of titles. He wasn't a respecter of educational degrees. He wasn't a respecter of backgrounds. He didn't care if you had a desire and a hunger to be led by him. Then he allowed you to follow him. He allowed you to come to him. So why, kingdom leaders, are we sharing means that mock the very people we claim to be the ones that we're trying to help. They, the very people that we claim to be the ones that we're welcoming into the fold. You're not welcome the, welcoming them into the fold if you're mocking how they come in. God is not pleased. Now let me hit a few buttons. Press, 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 press. Spoiler alert. I'm going to put a pause right here. If you got thin skin, come off of this video. If you find fault in everybody else, but you never look in the mirror, press stop on this video and going on somewhere else. Because I'm about to get a little blunt with y'all. Come as you are is not just about the outer appearance. Come as you are is an emotional state, an internal state. The come as you are that a lot of you guys accept is the come as you are that can be hidden. The come as you are that can be lied away, that can be manipulated away from those who don't have the eyes to see and the ears to truly hear. You guys only want people to come as they are if they are visually appealing to you. Yet many of you come to church as you are. Idolaters, adulterers, liars, thieves, whoremongers, addicts, in the closet or out, pedophiles, perverts, manipulators. The church is full of people who have come as they are. But y'all don't pick apart that come as you are. Y'all don't got too comfortable with those types of come as you are's. And you focus on the worldly stuff. You fo focus on the carnal stuff. You focus on the wrong thing. Let people come to church as they are. I don't care if they have just come out of a drug house and they got needle tracks fresh in their arms. They got blood coming down. We got first aid kits for that. I don't care if a young lady or a young man just got out of the bed of a married person. I 
I don't care how you come, just come. Because that was the true heart of God. That is what we are supposed to be encouraging people to do, to truly come as they are. God doesn't care that you're a fornicator, that you're an adulterer, that you're a liar, that you're a manipulator, that you're a thief. He doesn't care that you have on a short skirt. He doesn't care that you smell like weed. He doesn't care that you got track marks in your arms. He don't care how many baby daddies these young girls have. He does not care. If you are truly seeking God, and if you are truly desiring to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, come as you are. The process will transform you. But first, it's going to transform. The transformation is going to begin in your heart. And then the outer appearance will follow. But too many people miss that. And they miss that because they're walking around in their own mess. And it's easier to point out somebody else's visible imperfection than to deal with their own. Because you see, Prophet Lakeisha is not perfect. Prophet Lakeisha has to look in the mirror at herself every single day. Prophet Lakeisha knows what it's like to be judged by church folk. Prophet Lakeisha knows what it feels like to be judged by white folk in the business world. Prophet Lakeisha knows what it feels like to be judged and rejected by family because I don't agree with everything that they say and do. I know what it feels like. And because I know what it feels like in all those different avenues, I can say this. None of that, none of the people who have ever made me feel less than, none of the people who have ever made me feel like I didn't belong somewhere, none of the people who have ever made me question who God, who God is or what he thinks about me were a true representative of him. God has had to step into my life and show me himself and mold me and protect me and process and develop me because of the many people in the world who kept messing up what he was trying to do in and through me. So yes, this issue was something that is very sensitive to me because I know that the people who are hurt the most by what kingdom leaders and by what church folks share on social media are the people who are going to suffer in silence. They're not going to respond. They're not going to react. They're going to see it. And the enemy is going to get in their head and go see. Them church folk ain't thinking about you. You're not good enough to them. Look at what you got on. Look at what you did last night. Look at this. Look at that. And it's going to keep them in bondage. And I'm here to tell them. Don't let imperfect people keep you from seeking the only perfect one that we serve, and that is God and God himself. We know how somebody truly operates by the fruit that they produce. I don't care how shiny that apple is. If it's rotten on the inside, it's rotten. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all others, all other things will come with it. And for you kingdom leaders and for you seasoned saints, what that means is let people seek God as they are. Just the same way you come into church pretending to seek him as you are. Let people who truly seek God and who truly desire God to come after him, however they are. And in the seeking, they shall find what they have to stop finding are the false representatives of God who hide behind titles, who hide behind degrees, who hide behind, I've been doing ministry for 30 years. Yeah, you've been doing it wrong all 30 years. Get yourself together. And the reason why this message is so important for me to share, it is so important for me to get this out there. And I'm sure that I won't be the only one touching on this in the days and weeks to come is because of this. We are in the midst of a spiritual revival. It is already unfolding. It has been happening in the spirit realm for a while now. We are beginning to see the manifestation of this revival. Almost every day now you see more and more evidence of this revival. This revival, revival that is unfolding is not going to only encompass those who have been transformed into a place of perfection when it comes to their come as you are. This revival is bringing forth people from all walks of life, just as God ordained it to. 
If you are offended by some young girl's short skirt or some young man with his pants hanging down, then how are you going to handle the person next to you with tattoos all over their face or the person next to you with their hair in spikes or the person next to you with their hair in 10 different colors? How are you going to handle the differences in the diversity in people's lifestyles that you are unaccustomed to? The issue is, is you are not supposed to be so caught up in what somebody looks like that you fail to see the inner man and the inner woman and you fail to do what God has called you to do. Because if God has allowed you to encounter somebody, it is because there is something there for you to do, even if it's to do nothing more than to extend grace by keeping your mouth off of them. Let me say that again. Sometimes the grace that people need from us, church folk, is just the grace in our silence. Keep your mouth off of people. You have no idea what people go through in their day-to-day lives. You have no idea what's going to be that last spark that somebody needs to have the enemy in their head far enough to get them to go over the edge. Keep your mouth off of people. And if you are truly spiritually mature, you'll know that what God shows you in the spirit realm regarding those you come across is for you to pray on more so than anything else. Pray, P-R-A-Y. Stop P-R-E-Y-ing on the people that God has called to be healed, delivered, and set free by the ministry that you ought to belong to truthfully in spirit and in truth, not just in word, not just in title, but in spirit and in truth. This revival is going to be powerful. You guys have to either get it together or get out the way. It's as simple as that because God is not playing and he is not a respecter of persons. There are going to be more seasoned leaders falling and more new leaders coming up in this season than ever before. And it's going to happen suddenly. It is happening suddenly. Because God is tired of you seasoned saints operating under these religious doctrines, operating under rules man-made that were never meant to be forced upon people, imperfect people. We're all imperfect. I can go into a whole sermon about that, but I'm not. My point here is that we have to stop and we have to question ourselves. Check the posture of your heart, you kingdom leaders and you seasoned saints, before you go to putting your mouth on somebody else. Why do you feel like you have the right to judge and to condemn? Why do you feel like it is your business to judge somebody else's come as they are? Check your own come as you are. Are you perfect? Because I can assure you that those God has sent to correct, not convict, but to correct, correct, not to condemn, but to correct, will do so in love. And they will do so with the level of grace that will afford the person that they're correcting based on an assignment given to them directly from God. That will allow them to not be humiliated by man. Definitely not on social media. Y'all got to get yourselves together. The church has to do more internal work than it has done in the past. Because getting back to the come as you are within the church, the liars, the whoremongers, the adulterers, the idolaters, the thieves, the pedophiles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You should not be in church two, three, four, five, six years attached to a ministry that should be thriving and still be the same. Where is the healing? Where is the deliverance? Where is the true transformation? Not on paper, not these images that you guys portray to the world through social media, but true healing, true deliverance, true transformation. Because that is where true transformation occurs. There's an old saying, and it's a carnal saying, but it applies here. If you feed a child long enough, that child will start to look like you. If you love on a sinner long enough, you embrace them long enough, you accept them long enough, and they stick around long enough, they'll start to look like us. What does that mean? It means the transformation you want them to make in the form of them short skirts and them do and them sagging pants and them do rags and whatever, whatever, whatever you guys t- tend to con- condemn people for will eventually wither away and the transformation will show not just internally, but externally. 
True transformation begins on the inside. I don't want people to be so quick to transform on the outside that they forget the transformation first has to occur on the inside. But that's the message that we send them when we tell them that they need to cover up their butts or wear short, wear longer skirts or pull up their pants to take off the do-rags. The first question is, is, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that you are the apple of his eye? Do you know that you are a jewel to him? Do you know that no matter what the world has tried to say to you, no matter what the world has tried to make you believe, that God chose you and God formed you specifically for a time such as this, and he gave you purpose when he created you? Do we tell them that? Because that's what we ought to be telling them. That's the information. That's the knowledge that we ought to be pouring into them. We do that. We plant those seeds. We nurture those seeds. And the outer appearance will be a part of the final harvest. But we got to get ourselves together. We have to get ourselves together and we have to be better stewards of what God has given us and what he's called us to. Yes, you know better, but you didn't always know better. Some of you who proclaim to all, to already know better and to already be doing better need to go back and lay yourselves on an altar like Juanita Bynum used to. Maybe she still does. Get prostrate before the Lord. Because many of you are not right. You put on these images and God is stripping all of that away in this season. Christianity is not Halloween. Stop masking that which you don't want people to see because God sees it all anyway. Especially when the mask that you put on is a mask of perfection, a mask of titles, prophet, bishop, evangelist, etc., etc., etc. Sweetie, get over yourself. Internal first. The external will follow. Those of us who have eyes to see and the ears to truly hear what thus saith the Lord and what he would have us to see and what he would have us to hear. We looking at many of you seasoned saints and we going, mm, Lord be with them. And if you are a prophet like me, called to the type of mantle that I've been called to, you understand on a deeper level what God's emotion is towards situations like the one that I'm speaking on. And it's heavy. It's heavy on his true prophets. It's heavy on us because we get access to his emotion in a way that many of you don't. We get access to the hurt that is caused within the kingdom of God in a way that many of you don't and you won't. So a lot of this stuff I have to just bypass because I don't have permission to speak on a lot of it. But when he gives me permission to speak on something and when he tells me to speak on it, you best believe that I'm going to speak on it. Come as you are. Everybody is coming as they are. Stop judging Stop condemning, stop convicting people because their come as you are makes you uncomfortable because you sitting up hiding your come as you are. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Y'all stop throwing stones at people when they form of these memes. Y'all stop co-signing, stop condoning, stop criticizing, stop all of it. It is not of God. You are going to miss what is about to happen. If you don't change your mindset, spend this day and do a heart check. Do a heart check. Do a true heart check. God already knows your heart, good, bad, or indifferent. He knows your heart. So you do a heart check. You look at the person in the reflection looking back at you. And you say, you know what? This is what I need to work on. This is where I'm at. And work on that. And you pray about everything else. You see a baby in Christ. You see somebody trying to come to Christ. You see somebody out in the world. If you can't do nothing else for them, give them grace in the form of your silence. Keep your mouth off of people because the one thing that you don't want is for God to shut your mouth because you won't shut it. This is getting long. I'm going to get off. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>